Hello everyone and welcome to something that I have been meaning to do for some time now. Our weekly refresh is going to be not quite the same thing that it has been, but instead a continuation of my Our Darker Purpose series, which uh, hasn't so much fallen out of favor as much as just with FTL Advanced Edition coming out and my schedule currently being at a point where recording more than an episode per day is rather rough. Um, I kind of have not had the time to be recording Our Darker Purpose, which is a game I still very much enjoy and want to get back to on the channel a little bit at least. Um, there is still more that I want to accomplish in that series that I did not manage to do on camera. So we're here today to try to have a good run of things. Um, this will probably be left as a single episode, if not it'll be split up, and if it's very long, um, if I'm not very far and I'm doing well, I might split it up to be put up on over two days, um, just for the sake of, you know, not, well, I guess there's really no reason to. I already have, uh, seven videos recorded for the week, uh, including this one, so there's really no reason to split it up, actually. Um, other than if I need to take a break mid-recording, then I might split it up for the sake of facilitating that. But, other than that, um, we're gonna see what we can do on this. Uh, Sudsy's Ice Tray would be nice, but I am willing to pay 8 for Cat's Cradle. Slowing down enemies on hit is quite useful a thing to have. So I will not complain about spending some coins on that. And Sudsy's Ice Tray is also a good item, don't get me wrong. But of the two, I think that I can more consistently make practical use of uh, Cat's Cradle than I can make practical use of Sudsy's Ice Tray. Ooh, we get bubbles as well. That That is actually very nice. But yeah, um, Sudsy's Ice Tray is something that is very much more difficult to intentionally make use of. Not that it's impossible, but generally speaking, it's a lot harder to make use of in an intentional, uh, by design type of way than it is to make use of the slowing effect. So I've got no problem picking one or, over the other. Increases move speed by 25%, increases, and decreases light radius. I am very much okay with that trade. Just checking to make sure that my uh, audio is still working since my headset sounded like it messed up a little bit there. It has been giving me problems lately, but I don't know if it's the headset or if it's the USB port on my laptop. If it is the USB port on my laptop, I have some trouble. Um, that unfortunately is going to be very difficult to get fixed. Um, if it is just the headset, that'll be very simple to fix. Um, so I'm kind of hoping it's that one, but... It's always annoying when you don't know if it's a matter of your system itself, or if it's a matter of the equipment attached to it. Pitch Black, no thank you. Wealthy instead. We aren't going to get a vending machine, we're going to get a good amount of coins, most likely. Um, and Pitch Black, we already have Nevermore's Inkwell, just seems like a horrible decision to make. That is going to be very dark, and although you do get a discount on vending machines there, it is also a matter of, we've got, um, you know, our light is already lower than it should be, so making it even lower might be a bad, bad idea. Oh, just a second too late to take that out for good. Oops. Walked right into that. Of course, if you didn't know the slow effect in this game and why I like it so much, doesn't just actually slow the enemy, but it also slows their attack animations as well. So enemies that attack very quickly attack much more slowly. Prodigy of photo, photo Album to increase the amount of experience we earn is going to be helpful no matter what. Uh, plus 50 life or plus 5 damage. We're going to go with plus 50 life for now. Get a little bit of a tanky start. Um, obviously, I still like to build offense predominantly, but that tankiness is useful in its own, right? Uh, got to the chest just need to open it. Badly etched arrow. Uh, not a great item, but not a bad one either. It kind of fall falls into the same mold uh, as Sudsy's Ice Tray, where it's very hard to intentionally make use of the benefit it gives you. It's kind of something that tends to, when you get a benefit from it, it's kind of RNG luck more so than you actually deign to use it that way. Um, so not my favorite item, but it's one that, you know, stocking, stacking a lot of chalk effects can be a very good strategy. Um, it, has give, it has served me very well on runs before on the channel, um, and it is something that might serve me well again. But enough chalk effects and you can make short work of 
pretty much any boss as long as you can keep your chalk numbers up. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Also getting more of those chalk effects and then the perk that lets you uh, have a chalk cloud spawn when you pick up a coin is a very nice synergy that I would be interested in getting if possible now. So we got a couple of blobs. We do have a juice box which is going to heal for slightly more than what we would need it to at the moment so we'll save that for after the boss. Away fire. Thank you. And we're going to be fighting this guy. Not so bad. He can be a little bit annoying because his projectiles can be hard to dodge at times, like there, but as a whole, this is not the worst boss to be fighting. Okay. Okay, he's got four projectiles out now. Okay, took some damage. That's fine. Took a little bit more damage. Oh my god, it hit the wall instead of him. That is the worst way to take damage. Might as well use a juice box now, no reason not to. And we're just going to continue pounding away on this guy until he poses a threat to us. His projectiles are kindly staying out of the way mostly, although he did fire in a 5th and 6th one there. He's going to get out of the way of that chalk cloud. Oh, I walked right back into it and then walked right through the second one. Excellent choice, me. That was exactly how I should have played that. You can probably tell it has been a while since I've jumped into this game, because I am not playing as well as I used to. Although that wasn't very great to begin with, it was much better than I've been playing thus far in this fight. But that guy is dead, we'll go grab our juice box to get ourselves back to 6, and head on to the next floor. We got a too big versus a sensitive floor, we'll go sensitive, I do enjoy the higher damage dealing that we do. Let's me do things like that. We do have a memory room on this floor as well. Which, due to the fact we already have all the lore, is either going to be just consumable slash money, or could actually have an item in there if we get to fight the Archivist. Which is always a plus in runs, in my opinion. I have yet to come across a point where I felt like it was a negative for me to fight him. Uh, plus 20 damage versus vending machine prices are discounted 20%. We're going to go with plus 20 damage. We haven't gotten any kind of damage increase yet, so a little bit picked up is a nice bonus. You have to be a little bit careful of the confusion cloud here. But again, these guys aren't so bad when you can take them out quickly. And that's why I really like sensitive floors, is because you can take everything out quickly. Mephi's Wickedness, that is actually not a bad item. I remember at one point I didn't realize I was on a uh, power struggle floor and thought that that was uh, causing me to pay more at vending machines when it actually turned out that no, it was just a matter of the floor's effect causing me to pay more on vending machines. Oh my god. And we do get to fight the Archivist. I'm glad about that. Of course, he did manage to get a hit on us. We get max resist for 100 damage. That is not a bad thing to pick up. I am kind of tempted to go fight the boss right away, but I think we should explore a little bit more. Our health isn't in a great position, and more juice boxes would be nice. We'll also eventually get a vending machine, which could have some nice items in it for us. So I think this is our best decision to make. Goodbye, slime. Let's take this out before the clouds get into play. We did manage to, I think, actually stop her from even throwing her chair, which is a big boon. Cause didn't have to worry about figuring out where that was going to land and dodging it actively. And one more to go. D.E.D. dead. I'll pop a juice box. I probably should have waited to do that until I saw if they were going to be selling um, a juice box empowerment. But it works out the way we did it, so I'm not going to complain. And we got a chest here, which is going to be very easy to walk to. We get 9% dodge from Garbavan's Sense of Fear. And we find a vending machine which has Disquieting Drought. Um, yeah, we're going to buy that. We're going to empower our juice boxes a little bit. They'll be up to 25 now. But the sharp pointy gift is kind of nice. But at the same time, I do tend to die a lot when I'm trying to stick myself with low health. So maybe not the best decision for us to take when I haven't played this in a while. So I'm not too upset that we were a coin off from getting that. 
Um, the fedora, kind of same thing, it's a useful item, but it also means that I'm more likely to get myself killed. So, half, of, half to one, six a dozen to the other. Or, six to one, half a dozen to the other. That's what I'm looking for. Anywhere I can hit you? No? That's fine. Oh, hell no. Thank you. That was close. And now the second helping should spawn in the same pot as the main boss. That is actually rather nice when that happens. No. Thank you. Has he actually changed pots once? I don't think he has. And we completed the achievement for him again, which is killing him before a second helping. Really no reason to, because you still have to kill the second helping, but it just turned out to be easier that time. And we are on to the next floor. We're doing pretty well. We're on the Wound Ward's full floor. Um, I could still use some good items to make good things happen on this run, but uh, all things considered, we're doing okay. Um, especially for my first run back after quite an extended absence. Consider we're up to, I believe, episode 20 or 21 of the FTL series, and I haven't really played this uh, since I started doing the episodes of that instead of the episodes of this. Oh god. Damn it, confusion. Okay, we got rid of that guy. That makes the rest of this much easier. Second globe dude is down. And now we just have to deal with old Smokey. We did take a little bit of damage, but nothing too major. And we get the Sock Puppet. Awesome. Place is likely to drop tokens. Yes. Sock Snake, plus one shot when not moving. Good, good. Find a vending machine. Unused Knapsack I would like... Knapsack I would like to get. And the Merit Cutout, not necessarily my favorite item. Um, but yeah, I would definitely like to get that mirror, uh, that uh, knapsack because that would give us three more juice boxes that we could both use immediately and have the capacity for. Let's come up here, take these out while we go search for our treasure room of sorts on the floor. There it is. Survive. This is an easy one when you can destroy objects because you just come up here, destroy all the mirrors, and you don't really have anything to worry about. Well, I did manage to take some damage to a hand. Ooh, I really like this one. Penetrating shots is, or piercing shots, or shots penetrate through enemies, however you want to say it, it's a very, very useful item one of my favorites in the game. Let's come up here and kill this man. And we're gonna keep on going. Of course we already found where Gonroll is hiding, but I want to see what else I can get out of this floor before we go fight her. We might find another champion, we might find some more coins to get that knapsack. Who knows? And if we go fight her right away, we're not gonna know until after we're already done with the hardest part of the floor. Which is beating Goneril, who is not an easy boss by any means. And once you know the strategy to her, she's not that horrible necessarily, but she is still a rather big pain in the neck to try to defeat uh, when you don't have a lot of damage stacked up and you don't have the potato battery to slow projectiles. There we go. Uh, nothing in this room except for a hand that wants to eat me. Don't ask how a hand is going to eat me when it has no mouth, because that's irrelevant. Let's go fight Goneril. Um, wait, did we get enough for the knapsack? No, we only have six. Okay. Fair enough, I did not think we were going to get enough on there, but... This building has to be our first priority. The more we can stand still and get double shots, the better. Already taken out, good. Then this one, because the globes are really annoying. Good. Now we start fighting this part. This guy is going to spawn. We can take him out easily while still hitting the fortress. Which is one of the best things about uh, piercing shots on this fight. Is that the spawns don't prevent you from hitting the buildings when you need to. 
you're almost to the point where it is going to stop spawning, guys. Which is right about there. It's actually probably a little bit earlier. I did take a couple of stupid hits there trying to get over to the side and away from the chalk clouds, but not the worst thing. We're still doing okay for health. We are tearing through the fortress itself. Oh, that was a really good dodge until that last ball. Okay, now we get to summon Goneril, finish off the fortress, and then fight her. Same strategy as always. Jumping right away, that's a very rare thing to see, actually, in my experience. Oh. Now our health is starting to get a little bit more down, but we're still in good shape. Good, our bubbles actually finished that off, I think. And now we just kind of kite Goneril and make sure to make use of our shots when possible. You can hit her with both, it's a good thing, but really as long as we're hitting her, we're in good shape. Our bubbles are doing good work for us as well, of course. I like how this fight is going. Oh, it only did two damage somehow. There's a long tornado followed by a jump. Of course, the trickiest thing with this fight is the fact that she does get a lot larger and a lot harder to dodge as the fight goes on. But we're going to come out of this just fine. We're going to come out with a decent amount of health remaining. And she is dead. And we're on to the Capulet floors. So we got two big floor, a sensitive floor, and a sensitive Capulet floor. Let's go sensitive wound wards. Easier than the sensitive Capulet. Um, and still going to give me that quick and easy death of enemies that I so, so enjoy. Especially with our double shot tearing guys up, we can pretty much clear out anything in just a couple shots. With some good crits, we can do even better. What would I like to get right now? Um, more crit chance, for sure. Um, just more base damage in general would be nice. Oh no, you don't. You're not going to screw me over, buddy. No, oh, not my buddy guy. identifies the location of the boss, that's actually a useful item, because not only does it identify the location of the boss, it identifies which boss is on a floor, which is, of course, hugely beneficial when you're trying to make a choice if you know what the bosses are well enough to choose one that's not that bad. Oh, Cursed Art Supplies. 5% chance of instantly killing any non-boss enemy that we attack. That does include champions as well. Um... Better bug collection, I would really like to get sharp pointy gift, wouldn't be bad. Um, still the same problem as earlier, unsettling concoction. So in other words, we're going to wait until we've cleared out this floor a bit more and know how much money we're working with to decide what to, per what to pick up there. Um, we are going to probably buy something from that at least. It just depends, but what depends on how much money we get. Let us go take on these guys. I'm doing up. Oh, there's some damage. Uh, importance of finding tokens. Restore 2% health when you pick up a token, plus 25 life. We're going with that one. Um, also, I want to see my teddy bear has 42 damage left to take. That's actually really good. We've been holding on to that for quite some time, which is not necessarily the most common thing when you're dealing with uh, those breakable items. So I am happy to have had it as long as we have. It might last a couple more floors if I play well, but either way, it's been useful for us so far and will continue to be useful for a while longer. We're going to be checking every room for um, more tokens because obviously we want as much as we can get. That vending machine did have some good stuff going on. Oh god, that was unexpected. Globe to the face right when I got into the room. You know what, I need to take out these mirrors just to be safe. Get a couple more coins. 
we are approaching that point where we can uh, pick up the better bug collection. More damage, that was stupid. We're going to pop a juice box since we're going to be able to pick up a replacement right down here. Let's head over to the right. Okay, we're going to be fighting one of the feral cats. That died really quickly. What do you got for me, doggy? Of course, empowers juice boxes immediately after I use one. Naturally, naturally. Okay, another juice box, that's good. Plus 30 HP for free, essentially. And we are getting closer to being back to full health for the first time in quite some time. Anything I'm missing in this room doesn't appear to be. So let's move on to the right here. I guess it doesn't hurt for us to fight the boss before buying whatever we're going to buy from the vending machine. Just because we're already here, we might as well take it on. Let's pop one more juice box. And let's see, we're going to be fighting... Oh, I hate this thing. Especially on a sensitive floor. Although when it stops... Good. Now tear it up. Oh my god, those perfectly placed dodges. Not all that intentional, although somewhat. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! A nice quick death of the friendly footstools is not something you always get. But we managed to pull it off there. Now we're going to have some decisions to make. We do have 16 coins, which is of course enough to purchase an instant level. Um, the question becomes how close are we to the next level? Is that 15 coins worth it when we are at... Yeah, we're still very far off from the next level. So we're going to go with that for the free level. 25 life, juice boxes increase life by 4. Uh, we're going to go with that one. This is turning into somewhat of a tanky build, which as I've said before is not my personal preference. But that's kind of the perks that we're getting. Um, so that's what we're going with. I would like to start seeing some more potential damage boosting stuff coming up, but as it stands, we're moving through just fine. Our teddy bear is probably, yeah, down to 16 damage. It's not going to be around much longer. Sensitive Capulet Floor, sure. Virtuoso as the boss is not a problem at all. Oh, this was Wound Ward. It's not Capulet. My bad. But yeah, with the Virtuoso as a boss, this should be a very, very simple floor for us. All things considered, Virtuoso is not a very hard boss once you know how to fight him. I think my first couple of runs where I ran into him, I did have a little bit of trouble. But as a whole, not so much. Okay, let's just blow that up for the sake of if we ever come back in here not being taken by surprise. I don't see why we ever would when we've already, you know, cleared out the entire room. And it's, the, and it's a dead end with nothing connected to it, but just in case, better safe than sorry. Juice box that we could use to boost our health by four, but we're obviously going to wait until we uh, need to use it. Instead of just using it for the passive benefit. We actually can't even use juice boxes when our health is at max anyway, so... Doesn't really make a difference to me. Head over this way. We do have a ch uh, champion chalk cloud dude who's going to die very quickly. We get the broken mirror. Finally a use item. And one that I actually kind of enjoy having. It's not the best item in the game by any means. But it is something that does a good deal of damage. And it does it in a very quick burst. Now of course one side effect here is that there are a couple of juice boxes. If we don't take damage on the boss fight. Um, and by don't take damage, I mean don't take a lot of damage. We're going to be torn if we want to use... I am, take some hits and lose our teddy bear in the interest of... Well, we're going to take some damage here. And we get the used knapsack. Awesome. We couldn't buy it earlier, but... Oh god. Our teddy bear is dead. And we do have some rooms where we can easily take damage to use up more juice boxes if need be. Um, if we don't want to just... I mean, if we want to max out the benefit of our available health increases. 
That puts us back at full health. We do have two juice boxes still laying there. Obviously, we're going to save those as long as we can um, until they become useful. That's at the end of the floor. We take damage purposely, use them to increase our max health. If it's early in the floor, we uh, don't take damage. And if we don't take damage on the boss, then we save them. Or then we use them to get back to full if we do. I'm confusing myself with what I'm saying, but I hope you get the idea I'm going for here. So I think what I'm aiming for is kind of getting through a little bit. Got a couple more juice boxes on this room. Our max health is going to be very nice after this floor. I really want the crit chance, but healing 2% after every 5 enemies killed is a very useful thing. Um, we're going to hold off on buying anything until we see the rest of this floor. Okay, so first things first, we got our Virtuoso fight. We're going to pound away at him before he gets his attacks underway. Now, do my shots pierce the stool? No, I couldn't remember if they did or not. This is really the hardest thing of the fight, is just the fact that you kind of have to play it slow and steady. You can't just stand there and focus your attack. You have to dodge constantly. But if you know his attack patterns, it's not that bad, although I did just take some damage. It's not entirely unintentional. We're going to get through this boss fight just fine, and we have a lot of juice boxes to use up on this floor. Oops. Oh my god. The confusion actually got to me that time. Usually that's not much of a problem. So, we pop this, our max health goes up. We pop this one, our max health goes up. We pop this one, our max health goes up, and we're at max health. So now, I mean, unless we get, like, a lot more coins coming up soon, which is possible if you got an item drop from uh, someone and we managed to get the one that gives you a bunch of tokens. But I think we've already killed the champion on this floor and we don't have the perk that causes more to spawn. Um, offensive Chalk does double damage. We're going to go with this one. Um, more damage against bosses is much more situational, but it also has its own inherent benefits. Um... Let us go take some damage. Go take some damage. Go take some damage. Good. Can now collect all of these juice boxes. You would have thought we were on a gluttonous floor by the way that we got so many. We're going to be at max health, having increased it by a good margin on this floor, with max juice boxes, 9 out of 9. Um, and we're going to be one floor away from Regan's floor, which is a good sign. Vending machine, what do I want? Um, I'm going to go with the crit chance. The kill, the, ah, life steal is good, but the crit chance is going to be consistently good. Okay, we were actually at the floor before the Capulet Conclave, so that's a plus. I have yet to use my item yet, by the way, my broken mirror. is a good item, but not necessarily one that I make the best use of. Which could be said for almost every item in the game, let's be honest here. I hate these guys so much. Got one of these that turn the lights out. Come on, insta-kill. Thank you for coming down here to fight. That was kind of you. Juice box empowerment. We definitely have a good uh, juice box run on this. Uh, we have a lot of juice boxes, and the ones that we do have have plenty of good effects. That's actually why I went with the crit chance instead, is because we already have a decent amount when it comes to just um, health regen in general. There's a juice box we could pick up. If we so choose. Sure. Edgewood Hall Pass would be real nice to pick up. 
Um, not sure if we'll get enough, but that 100% dodge on the first attack of a room can come in a lot of handy. Especially when stacked with certain item, other items that we've gotten before. Um, the weeping plant, I think it's called. The one that causes me to deal damage to everything in the room when I dodge an, or resist an attack. Stacks really well with the Edgewood Hall Pass. Did get a little bit of dodge on that. God damn it, dude. Just die so I can get out of this room and not be dead. This is actually a very simple room to run across at this point in the game, let's be honest here. Um, still way too high health to bother using a juice box. So we got the room right before the boss here. We might as well clear that out. We aren't going to fight Regan yet. Because we might still be able to get some good stuff on this floor. Oop, I managed to actually get hit by that. That's kind of embarrassing, to be honest. Consider the guy was already dead and I still got hit by his attack. Excellent. Everything melts under the power of my double shot. That crit chance I think was a good pickup. We're doing crits pretty often now. Um, between our bubbles and our base attack and our double shot. We've got a pretty decent amount of damage going now. This is a rather well balanced run honestly. Um, in terms of our build. We definitely have more of a lean toward a tanky and health regen build. But we've also got a decent bit of damage. Thank you for dying so quickly. Let me out of here now. Thank you. Okay, dodge that. That was pure luck. Okay, so now one of these rooms. Easy to get to chests when you can just destroy everything that's making it difficult to get to. And we get plus 20% resist. The Lobster of Foreboding. Not the best item yet again, but um, again, we got kind of that midla, that half tanky, half offense based build going on. It's not a bad thing to have. In fact, I would say balanced builds do tend to work out a little bit better in this game uh, more consistently. Um, pure offense does a lot of good things for me as well, but tanky builds can certainly certainly make a big difference. There we go. Let's kill this plant as well. Gives me a coin, which is a little bit of health back. Then we got at least one more room. I don't think we fought a champion yet, and I don't think that we have gotten... Um, or we did find our treasure room type thing, but we have not fought a champion yet, I don't believe can't believe I just took damage there, I know that much. Over this way. That was a lucky spot to be standing, I won't even act like that was on purpose. Um, lots of plants, kind of a problem, but not that bad. D.E.D. -E dead. Maybe we have found a champion, or maybe we just didn't get lucky enough to have a champion spawn on this floor, but... Either way, we are going to go... Probably pop both of those juice boxes. What do I want from the vending machine, if anything, right now? Um, we can't afford anything I really want, so we're gonna get the disquieting drought. Might as well make use of the tokens we got. It's gonna put us to 204 of 251, which means that this should put us to 244 of 255. Still max lunch... Still max juice boxes, and we've got a good amount of chalk, which I think honestly is most useful on Regan. Um, out of all the bosses that you can use chalk on, I think I find the most benefit out of using it on Regan. Um, so we're going to be keeping an eye out for when our time comes to do that. I have resisted a couple attacks already because I am doing horrible at dodging. This is absurd amount of dodge for the fact that we have 20%, or not dodge, resist for the fact that we have 20%. Still taking a lot of damage though.
Okay, that was way more chalk than I meant to use, but it killed her. It killed her. In the worst possible way, but it killed her. Gluttonous, power struggle, gluttonous too small. Power struggle, Capulet will go for it. I forgot to check who the bosses were. Please don't tell me that this was Leafy Oversight. I think I saw that. I think I saw that this was Leafy Oversight, and that will make me very sad. That is a boss I am not very good at, unless I have extremely high damage. Okay. Just spam away attacks on this one. Taking more damage than I would like, that's for sure. Also because I spam way too much shock, we have zero right now. Uh, plus 20 damage, we'll go with that. A uh, bunch of resist, or a bunch of damage reduction when confused. Always helpful if you get confused, which hopefully I will not very often, because that means I'm going to be taking a lot of damage anyway. Oh, there was Bramble back there. I didn't even notice that. Did I really just walk right into that plant? My play is starting to fall apart a bit, which this is generally the area where that has tended to happen in the past. We do find uh, Regan's lunchbox, which will increase the damage of our bubbles by, I believe, 50%, which is quite nice. Yep, non-basic attacks deal 50% more damage. I will take that over the, uh, over the mirror. Because our bubbles are more consistent than the mirror. That puts us back at max juice boxes. We should be considering using one here soon. This is power struggle. We should be getting at least one more champion spawn on this floor. That dude died pretty easily, thankfully. What have I done to myself? Come on, plant bros. Leave me alone. Good. We aren't doing great on this floor so far, but... There's a juice box that we can use without penalty, because we can pick up another one to replace it immediately. Well, I mean, there's no penalty to using juice boxes, except for the fact that um, if we can take go long enough without taking much damage, coins can do the same thing without costing us that heal on rooms where there are no coins. So the delayed use of juice boxes can be very beneficial to us in the long run, and that's something that I want to keep in mind. Um, obviously, I don't want to delay too long and end up costing myself the run. I've done that too often. I'd love to get the gold star for another plus 10% crit chance. We're going to hope we get some more money. It's been a relatively poor floor so far. Um, and combined with the fact that things cost a bit more because it's power struggle, not a very good thing for our uh, well-being necessarily, but... Head off this way. Oh god, why did I just let that guy walk right into me? That was so stupid. So very, very stupid. Okay, and. Because that means we head over toward the boss room. There's three coins right there for us, which is also, I believe, 15 health. Yep, 15 health. Took some damage to the Bramble and to the plant shot. That was stupid. Let's die already, plant. Thank you. Oh, of course it's a room full of two of these guys before the boss. That was a lucky dodge.
Oh my god, I did it again! Obviously we don't have to be too concerned about juice boxes right now, because we do have eight of them still. Oh my god. I am the worst. Oop. That was a little bit risky. Uh, how many coins do we have? Six? I mean, it would be enough to buy a juice box, but I think we're going to hang on to it. It's not enough for the gold star, unfortunately. Oh, Winged Overseer, a little bit better than the uh, Leafy Oversight, I guess, but not much. We are going to want to keep our health up as best as we can. I'm using a couple juice boxes, not a bad thing on this guy. It's actually rather expected, I would say, to use a couple juice boxes on him. Because it can be very hard to dodge in the wind. Luckily our bubbles are doing good stuff for us combined with Regan's lunchbox. And our shots aren't bad. But we're still taking a lot of damage on this fight and he still has a lot of health left. Come on, man. Just die already. This is the kind of, like, uh... This is the kind of battle where you need a high damage build to get through it well. You can get through it without that, but it's gonna be difficult when you're more of a tanky build. Okay. Pop a juice box just to be safe. I know our health is not in the best of shape. Some more birds have spawned. Some more birds have spawned. Some more birds have spawned. Oh my god. Come on, I can survive this. Come on, just a few more hits. Just a few more hits. Come on. Yes! Survive it, I could. Now the question is, do I go back all the way down there by a juice box? I could, but I might just be able to wait and find out on the next floor. Oh my god. Seriously? Gifted, Terrace, no special effects on it. We do have a memory room on this floor. Could be useful. On the bright side, when we get confused by guys like that, we do take significantly less damage. Should probably still pop my two juice boxes I got, though. I am glad that wasn't a champion, because those guys can single-handedly mess up your run when they are. Okay, and let's take this one out. One of these guys who gets a shield. Not my favorite enemies in the game, that's for sure. Shield disappeared on him, but was still active, mind you. Just wasn't showing up. Definitely don't want the feather over the lunchbox. That active damage burst is probably not nearly as effective to me as the uh, passive damage bo damage boost. These guys aren't quite as annoying in rooms with lots of obstacles like this, but still quite annoying, mind you. Still might end my run. Oh my god. How many hits are you going to take to kill? Now you see why I like the damage builds. 
Because rooms like this would be a cakewalk if I could kill things quicker. Get out of here. Thank you. Constant 25% to all my attacks, I think is better than 50% to just the bubbles. But we got 25 health, we are almost dead. Okay, Feral Cat, actually not a bad thing to run across at this point in the game. Heals me up a little bit. Doggy, what you got? Lightning from my chalk, not great. Not the game changer I was hoping for. Oh yeah, I forgot the uh, Ark of this room. Must have been up in that uh, corner there. Oh god. So it must have been either up in this room. Yep. And we actually fight the Archivist again. And he killed us in one hit. And that's the end of the run. <sighs> well, it was fun jumping back into our Darker Purpose for the first time in quite some time. I hope you guys had fun with it like I did. Um, it reminds me very much how difficult that game can be. I felt like we had a good run going there and it fell apart so quickly to the Wind Overseer. Um, as always, thank you guys for coming out. Hope you enjoyed this midweek refresh. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a good one, everyone, and take care. Later.